for the service of morning prayer for Sunday, the 24th of January. Our hymn should be pretty familiar to you by now, if you didn't already know it. We are singing God of Grace and God of Glory. It's hymn number 594 in the hymnal. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the end of the year. The canticle for today is Psalm 100, found on page 82 in the Book of Common Prayer, under the title Jubilate. Psalm 100 on page 82 in the prayer book. We say this in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will give you as a light to the nations, that, that my salvation, salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The first lesson is from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim, it to, the proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 62, found on page 669 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 669, verses 6 through 14. Psalm 62, verses 6 through 14. Responsibly, I have first. I have first. First. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, Truly my, my hope is in him. him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My, my stronghold, stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath. All of them together. Put no trust in ex 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 extortion. 
In robbery, take no empty pride. Grow Though wealth, wealth increase, set, set not your heart to find. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. For, For you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's second lesson is a reading from 1 Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Be to God. Our gradual hymn is the verses of peace before us, peace behind us. And we'll do the Alleluia verse after I read the gospel. <coughs> Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, 
who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Well, the story is that uh, even when you say no, God has a way to work around that. And so Jonah and that story of his reluctance is uh, seared into the minds of many of us from childhood. Um, though I will credit my parents with not saying that when I tell them no, I wasn't going to do something that what happened to Joe was going to happen to me. They, they didn't quite go there. Um, although I could see the temptation when I was being particularly, believe it or not, obstinate. <laughs> Paul, on the other hand, has a little bit of a different look at all of this today. And I'll have to admit, it's probably the first time I felt like Paul was being inclusive to me, and it wasn't all that important. He wouldn't have understood that. But it says, for those of you who have wives, <laughs> I didn't count myself as one of those. <laughs> Jesus would return and everything would change and everything would be good and there would be judgment and morning and evening a last day. I wonder if we misinterpreted how we think Jesus is coming back. 
wonder what we will see in our own time. We certainly have had a rough year or two. As the psalmist says, you know, God hears our cries. As, as Nineveh repents, God hears their cries. Will they hear the, the cries of almost well, over 400,000 dead now in this country? Two million dead, I believe, across the globe that we know of. There are going to be a lot that have died that we didn't know. And they're not a statistic. But there was also the understanding that, and the, and the church in, in Corinth, and you know, they had a they had a tendency of turning worship into a potluck and a party. Uh, it's all the same thing. And Paul feels constrained to pull them in a little bit. And, um, and there's a sense of in joining this Christian community, is he speaking to that group or is he speaking to the whole world? Is he speaking to this particular church where the buying and selling of goods, and if you get wealthy, don't get hooked on being wealthy. And that idea that when you come together as a community in Christ, there is an equality of sharing. And you read that about that all over in, in, in the Gospels and in, in the, uh, the letters to the churches that uh, There's an equal footing for everybody there. Some people will rise to leadership positions. And by the third century, it was considerably more complicated, the Christian church, than it was a couple hundred years prior. There was more structure, more hierarchy, more order to things. And the church was expanding rapidly. calling of these four men as disciples, what did their mothers think? <laughs> what do you mean you're leaving your dad and me? And you're going off with this guy. You know, this cousin just got arrested. find in the Gospel of Mark that everything has an immediacy to it that is reflected in both the Jonah and, and, the, and the First Corinthians text. There's this urgency. And if you read the Gospel of Mark, you find out everything's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye and with immediately stretched all the way through that earliest written Gospel. And immediately this happened, and immediately they went there, and immediately this happened, and immediately they they left their nets and they left their boats and they followed him. There was an urgency and a very magnetic draw about who Jesus was and what he was doing at the time. One of the problems with me in my life is that immediately it hasn't always been on the order of business and so I can get myself in in all kinds of trouble by not doing something right on the spot. But then there are times when immediately doesn't happen and I'm thankful that immediately didn't happen because cooler heads and a moment of wisdom or inspiration changes the situation I am in. So there are things in our lives that require a sense of immediacy social distancing, hand washing, and wearing a mask. <coughs> the willingness to share what we have with others because others are worse off than we. How is it that we help the world 
immediately around us that's struggling for housing and food and medical care, for comfort and prayers and grief counsel and friendship and just a smile. There's a nurse on the med search ICU at the hospital that has the most expressive eyes on the planet, I'm convinced. So when Deirdre comes up to you and says something to you and you say something back and she's amused or delighted or something, the upper half of her face lights up. And you know whether that piles of PE, PPE and big masks and and the hood over her that has the, the, the positive pressure. I mean, she looks like a scuba diver, you know, on land when she goes in to see a COVID patient. But you know from her eyes, she's delighted or amused. She communicates with her face that way. I think that Jesus probably communicated that way too, by just looking at She's giving her whole self to her patient with an immediacy that is astounding, with an endurance that's wearing thin. And she's called to what she's doing. Deirdre is. We're awfully glad to have her. If you're in the right place at the right time, Amazing things can happen. If you're willing to say yes to God instead of no, that doesn't mean God's way isn't thwarted. But I would say Jonah's situation would have been a little easier on him if he just said yes. But for whatever reasons that you can conjure up from the story, he did not. Then when he did, the calamity that God had threatened for Nineveh didn't happen because he was the person God had chosen for the time and the place. And repentance came upon the really big city of Nineveh. Paul has set the stage for us to be sharing and caring and wonderful people. As the hymn that we sang at the beginning said about being generous and not being attached to things and ending up being poor in soul. So some things can happen immediately and some things we need to be pulled along. But Jesus called these disciples I have to admit that there was probably more of Jonah in me at the beginning than there was of Andrew and Peter and James and John. And I think it's particularly interesting that this was a, two pairs of brothers. That these, these guys were actually related to one another. It's a heavier cost to the family who's giving them up to the discipleship. There's a certain amount of camaraderie that comes with them being called together. It's that called together comradeship that I feel so deeply about this congregation. There's nothing quite like St. Edmund's coming together on a Sunday and trying to get you all lined up for worship because you're all so happy to see each other. We have stories to tell and stories to listen to and, 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 and events to mull over and you know, sorrows and news, both good and bad. And then we do worship and then we do some more of that after coffee hour. It's that camaraderie of a family, a family that has said yes to God family that knows what it is to cry out to the Lord in our distress. A family that is learning and always learning how to share. And a family that hears the voice of Jesus 
when he says, come and follow me.
your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Especially those who are hospitalized. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that who have died. I ask your prayers for those on our prayer list, for Angie and family, Derek, David, Joan, Stephen T., Dan, her CO997, Evangeline, Lucille, Julie and Tom, Cara, Big T, Sean, Will, Darlene, for Carol, Christine, Liz, Seth and Ronan, Dalton, Erica F, Joe, Robin A, Claire and Josh, Ellen, Diane T, or Reverend Stacy, Ben V, Gail, Alec, and Paloma. And for Helen, Kathy, and family, Chuck, Betsy and family, Bud, Janet and family, Casey, Ann and family, Verl and family, Dave, <coughs> Grant and Vanessa, <coughs> Frank, Eileen and family, Sophie, Ellie and family, Patrick, Diane and William, Brad and Barbara, Lilani, Catherine Henwood, his brother, Bud and family, and healthcare workers. Jan, Jim, Shirley, and family, Antonio, and family, Catherine H.K., for the Homeowners Association and all deacons, for Darlene Ross, for Sebastian and Roman, for Rowan, for Marnie and family, for Joan and her daughter Shirley, for Tekla, Erica, Nadia, and Alec, for April and Amitabha, John, Mylene, and Audra. For Marjorie, Laura, and Kelly, and for Bob, Will, Emily, and family. <coughs> and for Alexandria, Joe and Karen, Mindy and Itzik, Shea, Jean, Karima, Lori C., Mike, Sean and family, Joe and Michael, Trevor, Miles and Diana, Nick and Michael, Jackie C., for Nick G, Jackie R, Jackie B, for Shirley L, Peter, Ken and Rose, Papa Joe, Ruby G, Michelle R, Christine, Matt, Vanessa, Jane, Lucille S, Catherine, and Ron Mark. And 
for Barbara and family, Ian and family, Seth and Ronan, Sandy and Jaden, Tuffy, David C. and family, the Kirkpatrick family, Sarah, Peter and Shannon, Shirley, Jennifer and Tom, Kevin G., Steve and Ernie, the Caravan for Peace, and Lowell and Susan. And for Jim, Angie, Pamela, and family, for military chaplains, for the Pacifica Resource Center, for Alan, Amy, Lillian, and family, for Janine and Pat, the Wong family, Joan, Joseph, Rosiana, and grandchildren, for John Arthur, Beatrice, and Lincoln, John, Elizabeth, and, the, and their community, for Janet, Helene, and Rose, for the Reverend Joe Holt and his family, and for Danny F., and for John and Susan. Praise God for those in every generation whom Christ has, in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. And as our Savior Jesus has taught us, together we pray. Our well, Father, Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. on page 98 in the prayer book. <coughs> the suffrage is under letter A. You do this responsibly. Page 98. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your, your people, people sing with joy. joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain, and sustain us through the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may receive the glory of his marvelous work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please pray along with me uh, the general thanksgiving prayer on page 101 in your prayer book. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving, loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A few announcements for you. Uh, first of all, on Monday we 
dedicated ourselves and a peace pole to peace. Um, it, it was lovely. There was about a dozen of us here, um, some members of the congregation, and um, and some folks from um, Pacific uh, Peace People. And, uh, and and my thanks for Dave and Linda Peebles and all that they have done to to uh, encourage us and to make this happen. Uh, you may not know that with this um, the, and the proclamation that says you know you now have a peace poll that comes from the organization that 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 is, is a portion of this. Um, and uh, on our behalf, in in uh, somewhere in the continent of Africa. Ten trees were planted because we put a peace pole on our property. And uh, I, I called the bishop and told him about that, and, and uh, he was more than a little excited um, because it's something called carbon capture. That uh, uh, you, you look to, to uh, plant more trees so that um, the effects of our, our carbon in the air is reduced. Um, I told him our trees were doing fine over here, by the way. <laughs> he said, yeah, you've got an urban forest. I said, Edmund, you're right. So he was pleased with that, uh, with that initiative on our part. Um, Brian Wismer and I are working on a, um, four classes that are going to be on the theme of um, blessed to be a blessing. And because of his work requirements right now, we're not gonna start right away in February. We're gonna take two weeks at the end of February and two weeks into March, uh, roughly during Lent. Um, they will be on Sunday evenings, but we haven't set the time. Uh, we're, we're kind of constrained in terms of when we can do this because uh, uh, Brian has a very demanding job and uh, and I'm just so pleased that he's working with me on this. It's it's going to it's going to be a, a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to to work on a class with somebody, and, and and I don't get to do that very often, so I'm pretty excited about this. So uh, we've kind of put the out, tentative outline for the four classes, and we're going to start to swapping stories and and ideas and uh, gearing up for about three weeks, four weeks from now to start. We'll, we'll publish it uh, and, and we'll put it on the, uh, at the end of the services next week um, as to the time and the exact dates. And, uh, and I'm pleased we're doing this. It, 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 it feels really fine. He's a joy to work with. Thanks, Brian, by the way. Also, a shout out thanks again to Renee Corrin who made the first masks I had during COVID. I, I figure that this is as close as I can get to the, to, I guess it's here, to the green, you know, appropriate. And I figured, you know, maybe this will be for Lent because it's purple on the other side. So thank, thanks, Renee, and, and for your uh, uh, prodigious work on producing masks for, for so many of us. Um, uh, they're, they're, these are really fine. I get lots of compliments on wearing these. Um, I think that's it for now, for me anyway. Um, if you get if, if you get on online um, later at the end of the month, I'm I'm working on an article right now for Pacific Voice, and it will go in um, to Suzanne tonight or tomorrow to, to be published. So letting you know that I'm continuing that kind of um, engagement community-wise with uh, the folks in Pacifica. Yeah. I was gonna say that well now that there's been there's been a transfer in the administrations maybe we don't have to like have any announcements or do anything but that's not quite how it works <laughs> um, so th there are plenty of things still going on in Pacifica obviously the peace people and their peace poll uh, got going but there's also Pacifica social justice and other groups um, because we need to keep an eye on the new administration and make sure they go in the direction that's going to be helpful for everybody and all, all people in this uh, and residents in this country. 
So uh, just uh, contact me, uh, 650-425-7088 if you want some more information about those organizations. And if you're interested, anyone who's interested in um, uh, helping with the library, sorting through the books and so forth, I've had a couple of people who offered to do some of that. We can always use some more help. And, or if you just want to uh, get some of the books that we've got over here, because we're going to be kind of reducing the numbers of them, let me know about that. Uh, so that's about it for, for now. Do we have any uh, birthdays or anniversaries? Or? No, nobody contacted me. I will say that I was very impressed with our youth poet laureate yeah. and her poem for the inauguration was truly inspiring and tear-jerking and thoughtful and, and just well, well done. Um, she was quite outstanding and quite amazing in my eyes. I, I was just I was just feeling for her family, the pride <laughs> of having her up there and, and how wonderful that was. And that was a magnificent thing. That was m much of the day as far as I was concerned. <laughs> yes. We continue on page 102 in the Book of Common Prayer as I pray the, the prayer of St. Chrysostom about us coming together and praying. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number... 550. Great choice. Jesus called us.
serve the Lord. Right. Thanks be to God. God.
if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promise to glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit.